Well, hey guys, last episode, uh, got the Firebird running, which was pretty awesome. Um, had a bit of a vacation and uh, doing some, some, you know, end of school and summer stuff. So had a little bit of a break on this, but we're back at it now. And today we're going to work on the fans. When we got it running last time, the, uh, it ran good, but it had two kind of critical problems. One was that it was leaking transmission fluid. Uh, from one of the cooling lines, which I think was just a bad clamp, like it had one of those spring clamps on it, and I could I could squeeze it with my fingers and slide it around, and that feels like that was probably not tight enough, so I put a good screw-on clamp on there. That should solve that problem, but we'll see when we get this fired up again whether or not that still leaks. But the second bigger problem was it was overheating, and uh, that could be a lot of things. It could be, uh, I said at the time, um, it could be a airlock. Uh, I just filled it. Didn't really bleed it very much. I also had two uh, these small little tubes that come up to the top of the radiator. I had them backwards, crisscrossed, upside down, whatever, wrong. But the one big problem I noticed was that when it was hot, boiling hot, the electric fans never kicked on. Uh, and that's kind of a problem. So we're going to troubleshoot the fans today and see if we can figure out why those aren't working. Um, they, the relays in these are kind of a common problem. So that's we're also going to check the relays. So check the fan, voltage, relay. There's also a switch on the dashboard that to, so far I have no idea what it does. A little, little like three-way toggle switch. Uh, and it may be for the fans. That was actually a fairly common modification I've heard about is that the relays go bad and so they just put a fan switch in and you can manage from the fans on and off. These things do get awfully hot. It's really, really compressed in here. It's pretty common that these overheat or get at least run on the hot side. So um, a common thing people do is put a switch in for the fan. They watch your temperature gauge when it gets a little high, kick the fans on. Don't wait for the sensor to do it for you. So we'll see if that's part of it. Is the switch bad? Is the wiring disconnected? You know, go through a whole bunch of wiring stuff and see if we can figure out why the fans aren't working, which is awesome because wiring is totally my area of expertise. First thing I want to do is check and make sure the fans themselves actually work. They should, but let's rule that out. That's an easy test. I've got a fused link uh, hooked up here to the positive terminal, and there's a negative or a ground, a body ground on the frame over here on the driver's side. And so I'll just make a quick wire and uh, pop off off that, and we'll just do some couple of test leads and just give it 12 volts and see if it works. So this will be a constant hot. So then we're ruling out, you know, any we're, we're bypassing any of the controls, any of the relays, any of the sensors. Just give it power, see if it spins. That's the first step. So we got a little bit of black wire here. So we'll just strip a section of wire. Just kind of make a quick makeshift terminal. I way too much wire, but that's okay. Let's get a little extra wire on the other end. Let me just clip a lead onto that, like this. And we'll just touch that on the other end. So let's see, we gotta get this plug disconnected here. Just get a little pick to pry the Clip away. Hope nothing falls in your face. There's two connectors in there. So I will hook up. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, which one we connect them to. Touch these, and we should get fanage. Okay, and we do. Just to be sure, we will check the other one. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so fans work. 
so it's not the fan, which was probably likely all along, but again, got to rule it out. All right, back up top. Right, so here's that switch. I took the kick plate off where this, where this was attached to see what it was wired to. Nothing. There were no wires back here. So that was, that's not the problem. Not sure what that's for, but we'll keep moving on. All right, so next we'll check the relays. So inside this box in the engine compartment, it gives you the diagram of where your, which relays are which. Cooling fan one, cooling fan two, and coolant fan three. So that is one, two, and three. So we'll start pulling one out. Just put a piece of cardboard here so we don't drop everything down on the engine, but we're gonna test the relays here. And if you look on these relays, there's a diagram on them. And it shows 85 and 86, I assume you can see that, uh, are the power and ground. 30 is one end of the switch, 87A and 87 are the other end. So as you apply power, it's gonna open and close that circuit. So it should be open now, which means it should be without power. It should have continuity on this terminal and this terminal and not on these two. And when we apply power to it, it should switch from this one to this one. So that's what we're gonna test. Okay, so we've got no beepage here, but we do there. Okay. So then we'll apply our power. So using the same power and ground we used down below. Where'd my ground go? So you can kind of hear it, so you'll hear it switch. Let's see if I can get this up close to the microphone. You'll hear a click when you get power to it. So now, I got too many wires dangling here. We should have no continuity there, but we have it on the outside now. Disconnect our power, we're back to the middle. So that means that relay is good. Not a relay problem. So we'll stick that one back in and we'll test the other ones. So that one works. Okay, so the relay tests good. Uh, so in this case, with these with this relay, like I said, since this was the where you would apply power to switch, this is the switched connector connection, closing the circuit from here, which means this should have constant power, or at least have power when the key is on. But um, probably constant power because I think these fans are supposed to run even after you turn the car off to make sure the engine cools off. So. We're going to test this real quick. If it doesn't, I'll turn the key on and see if we have power. But let's test without power first, just because I left the keys in the house. Um, and I'm too lazy to go get them right now. So what we should be able to do is use a test light with the probe in where this pin goes, which would be, in this case right here, it's pin number one on the fuse block. Again, just kind of apples to apples. I'm using the same ground wire. If you haven't used a test light before, you just hook one end up to ground and then this end up to power and it should light like that and it does so that means you've got power coming to this so if power is coming here and we apply power to these two to switch it should apply power to the fans so there's a controller and like your your computer controls when to apply the power here based on a sensor but it also could be a faulty wire or connection to the computer somewhere, some short. So I'll show you a test. This isn't probably something everybody can do, but um, 
if you have one of these boxes, you can test these uh, controllers with a kind of a high-end scan tool. I'll show you that. All right, I did a video a while back on like a little wireless scan tool uh, that connects to your phone. Just do like troubleshooting codes and stuff, but this is kind of a higher end one. It's a little Android tablet. And uh, this has a variety of controls. Obviously it can read trouble codes, but it also can run various um, items in the car, like mimic the computer. So I'm gonna try this and see if I can um, get the fans to run using this controller. And if they do, then that means that the computer to the fan is working. So, oh, put the key in. Start her up. Plug into the OBD port. Now these 97s are kind of weird with these OBD ports because they're not really an OBD2, they're kind of a hybrid, I guess. So it, of OBD1, OBD2. So it doesn't work perfect. So it's trying to connect to the car now. We'll see if it connects automatically. We can do a manual connection if it doesn't. Yeah, see it doesn't quite connect, doesn't quite find it right. It finds it as a 2.4 liter or a 3.1 liter, which is not the case. So we'll do a manual selection. We'll do a 1997 passenger car Pontiac Firebird V8 Auto. Okay. Now I'll try to do a scan. So it does a quick code scan, doesn't find any codes. So that's good. At least in this case. Um, so we can do a system diagnostics and then we can pick our system. So we can go the airbag system, powertrain, or the chassis. So we're gonna go powertrain. I think that's where I wanna go. An actuation test, that's where you actually run something. Engine, yeah, there we go. So you can run all kinds of stuff here. Hit the fuel pump, uh, EVAP, EGR, uh, hit the AC. All I really care about right here is fans. So I'm gonna hit the fans, and let's see if we can hear them. Turn it on. The fan's running. I don't know if you can hear that or not. So we'll turn fan relay one off. That's a low speed fan. And this is the high speed. Fans two and three. Yep. And then we'll do one, two, and three together. And they work. So that means from computer to fan, everything works. There's no wiring problems, no fuse problems. So something is not telling the computer to turn the fans on. And if it was getting hot enough to boil, it seems like the fans should be on. Okay, well, it looks like our fans are working. That's good news. I'm not sure why they didn't kick on before, but everything from the computer to the fans seems to be set up right. So I don't have any shorts and a wire, bad relays, bad fuses, anything like that. So everything seems to be functional. Or it could be maybe a bad sensor somewhere. That's the only other thing I can think of. The temperature sensor that runs the gauge is working. When it did get hot, the temperature gauge was hot. It seemed to be hot enough anyway that, that the fan should turn on. So uh, maybe there's another sensor somewhere. I remember reading about in the LT1 Roadmasters or Impalas, there is a second sensor. There's two, one that's on the water pump and one that's on the, on the block. Uh, so I'll do some digging on that and see if there's a different sensor somewhere. Maybe that's the reason why the fans aren't working. But nothing else, you got to see how to troubleshoot uh, relays and uh, how to run a test light and how to use one of these fancy tools. You may not have one of those, it wasn't super cheap. Uh, they can be a little pricey, but they're really handy to have in cases like this because you can spend a lot of time troubleshooting wiring and such uh, without it. So uh, if you have the means, I recommend one. Uh, I'll throw a link down below for this one.
I also went around and replaced all of the clamps. So I mentioned the beginning of this video, actually going back, well, it actually was yesterday when I started this, but the uh, transmission cooling line was leaking and it was leaking because of a bad clamp. And that was true and that stopped the leak. So I went and actually, so after I got it started back up and, and testing everything again, I was, I was leaking coolant from all over the place. And there's a bunch of those spring clamps everywhere. So I don't know, 25, 30 year old spring loaded clamps, maybe they're just not that strong anymore. So I went and replaced them all with new hose clamps, new regular screw on, you know, screw tightening hose clamps. And that resolved all my leaks. I didn't have to bleed the system because there wasn't really that much air in it. Um, that had self bled. So it's, it was really just those two hoses I had flipped and the fact that I was leaking coolant all over the floor that caused it to overheat the first time. I ran it for about 20 minutes uh, at temp but no overheating issues, so we're good to go there. So now I'm gonna start getting everything put back together in the front and uh, put get the headlights put back on, and we're gonna start moving this thing forward. If you have any, again, if you have any uh, suggestions on the temperature sensor on these fans, throw them in the comments below, I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching, appreciate you guys very much. I uh, hope you learned a little something, and hope, as always, maybe you get a little confidence to get out in your garage and wrench on your project. So good luck to you, and we'll see you next time.